listening to another Friday night uh, edition of Loyola Cub Football. We are live from Smithfield, and we have a good one today as the Loyola Cubs look to uh, raise their record from 1-1 one one to 2-1. One one. They're facing off against the Loosinger Olympians. So, uh, Josh Gallagher getting ready to kick it away here for the Cubs, and we are uh, just about underway. And the kickoff is going to be a good one. It's going to bounce there around the 10-yard line. The Olympians have it, and they get some room. They make one man miss, and uh, it gets dragged down there around the 28-yard line. So uh, it's going to be Losinger Olympian football to start off this game. Uh, just some background on the Losinger uh, team. They are uh, traveled about an hour away to get here. Uh, they have a 2-1 and one record, scoring 73 points and allowing uh, 43 um, against them. This Losinger Olympian uh, team is certainly a talented one. Uh, got a lot of standout players on both sides of the ball. They have uh, Samu Moala on the uh, on the uh, defensive line, and he's a really notable player to watch. He's a uh, four-star recruit in the class of 2026, and he holds offers from schools like Alabama, Auburn, Coach Prime's Colorado, Oregon, USC, and Tennessee. So he's certainly a player to watch. Uh, this is a very young and uh, raw, but uh, very talented losing her team as we get ready for the first offensive play of the game. Going to be number four, Jair Alexander taking the snap and he's going to hand it off uh, for a gain of three or four yards. And it's going to be a uh, second down here for the Olympians. DeMonte Bias is another talented player for losing her. He, is a, uh, he holds an offer from San Jose State. And he can, be, he can play wide receiver, he can play cornerback, but he also you'll also see him taking a lot of handoffs from the backfield. So uh, Bias, certainly a versatile option for the Olympians. This is, uh, this is a team that's a very big team. They're strong, they're physical, and uh, they're going to look to overpower the Cubs in the trenches tonight. That's where they're going to look to win this game. But the Cubs, as it's going to be a nice handoff by the Olympians, it's going to be a gain of about maybe uh, six or seven, eight yards. Um, this Cubs team as well has some really star pl uh, standout players on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, it's got a strong uh, senior core led by Jacob Farag um, on the defensive line, Jake Ariano uh, who plays safety, and then it also has a lot of really young talent. Um, although you also have Champ Westbrook on the D-line, but it's a lot of really young talent as well. Um, there's really some really strong juniors there with um, Henry Cassani and Scott Taylor in the linebacker position, number five, Henry Cassani. Um, so that's a really, as they're gonna get to uh, to bias in the backfield and bring him down. Cubs swarm the ball and uh, bring him down. It's Valdez and Scott Taylor, Desi and Scott on the tackle there. So Desi, Scott, and Henry form uh, the three standout juniors there on the defense. But uh, it's really the it's really the young guys that are making a big impact. Uh, you got number. Uh, Number 23, Brandon Lockhart, was recently rated the number one player in the uh, sophomore class in all of California. So that is certainly, um, he's certainly a player to watch. Number number uh, one cornerback in the country, number one player in California. So Lockhart is just an outstanding asset for the Cubs there, especially when he gets in man-to-man -man defense situations. He is a pick interception machine. So uh, look for the Cubs to try and get Brandon in those one-on-one -on -one matchups as they're going to be a little pitch over there by the Olympians and going nowhere. As it's number 22, Chaz Austin, the senior, gets the tackle there. So far in this first drive, Losinger is playing a bit conservative. They're not uh, trying to do too much here. They're not taking any deep shots. They're throwing the, they're handing the ball off, doing a little pitch, pitch and catch here and there. And I think that's gonna be the bread and butter of their, uh, of their game because they are such a big team. They, if they, they're gonna try and overpower the Cubs and just really just ram it down their throats. So Champ Westbrook is uh, another great player for the Cubs. He's just committed to Arizona State, and he's just another part of this great senior team. This is a really, there's some really standout young players, but also a really strong senior core, and that's uh, the heart of this team here. As there's going to be a play action there by the Olympians. They give it to number eight. He's going to run and go nowhere. Wrapped up by Peter Chirino, the sophomore from, uh, from the South Bay. So Sharino there on the tackle, as I was saying about these young players, he's a young player, 
He's uh, only a sophomore, but he's playing out there with this uh, experienced senior group, and it's just giving him so much uh, great experience playing with these guys. And it's just gonna, it's really exciting to see what these guys are gonna blossom into by the time they're seniors. As Luzinger gets ready to punt it away. The punt is up and it's not a great one. Oh! M m really just completely illegal hit there by Luzinger. Um, wow, that was just shocking to see because um, looked like Josh Gallagher, number 83, was there back to receive it. And the ball was still in the air. Nowhere near catchable, and he just got laid out. So that's definitely a flag. It's going to be 15 yards for sure. And that's going to give the Cubs great starting field position. This Cubs offense is also something to definitely keep an eye on. These guys uh, can play. Uh, we have Gallagher at receiver, like who just took the penalty. And it's also, uh, they, we also uh, a strong, strong receiving core led by Duke Jaraputo. Duke is a transfer, uh, freshman year at Windward, sophomore year at Oaks Christian, and uh, now he's at Loyola, and he's making his presence known in a big way. Had a huge touchdown as Niall's going to take the snap and hand it off uh, to number six. That's Sean Morris. He's another transfer. Morris is going to get three or four yards there. Cubs are staying ahead of the chains. But as I was saying, Jared Puto is a uh, transfer from Oaks Christian, and... Um, He's really making his presence felt. He's also a highly touted recruit, holding offers from schools like Texas A&M, SMU, um, and, and, and such. And he has just had a huge game last week, and he's looking to follow that up with another performance as Niall takes the snap and he gives it to number three. That's Duke. Duke off the sideline and gets pushed out of bounds rather quickly. Thomas Niall, number nine, is the Cubs' starting quarterback. Uh, he was the starting quarterback on the freshman team his freshman year. And he was the backup last year um, to Xavier Rice. So, um, yeah, Thomas gained a lot of great experience playing under Xavier. Um, Xavier now playing quarterback at Duquesne University. And now Thomas Thomas has won the starting role this junior year. And he's looking to become that mentor figure that he had uh, for himself as he's going to give the ball to Morris and uh, for no gain. But arguably the most uh, most strong part of this Cubs offense is their offensive line. They got a really strong offensive line unit led by Champ Westbrooks as they're going to try and QB sneak it, but flags come in and the play gets called dead. So let's see what this call is. It's going to be a false start on the Cubs. So that's going to be a repeat fourth down. And let's see if that uh, changes Coach Kasani's mind and they decide not to go for it because, you know, fourth and inches, that's certainly a doable doable play to uh, get but when you're talking about fourth and five fourth and six that's a play that maybe you're going to want to uh, maybe you're going to want to go uh, kick the field goal and take the points but this offensive line unit as I was saying they got some young guys but they have a really really strong senior core in, uh, in Nate and in, uh, Ryan Turk and uh, Champ Westbrooks Ryan Turk committed to play football at Dartmouth um, and as I was saying Champ also a defensive stud but he's committed to Arizona State so Niall in the shotgun, he's going to take the snap here. He's going to find his man. That's number 15. Scott Taylor's going to have the ball. and see if he gets the first down. Got some yards, but I think it's going to come up just short. So the Cubs get uh, can't make anything of that great starting field position, and they're going to turn the ball over back to the Olympians. So it's Olympian ball here. You know, just an observation, this game has been pretty chippy so far. These Olympians are not, uh, they're not afraid to get, they're not afraid to get chippy. They're a physical team, they're big, and they're looking just to, uh, they're not afraid to just let the Cubs have it. The stands here at Smithfield are just starting to fill up. The Mighty Roar Band is playing, the student section is, is bumping. And the Cubs are looking to uh, send these fans home happy. Nothing doing offensively for either team so far. As um, as Harris lines up in the shotgun. Alexander. He's going to give the ball up to number seven. That's DeMonte Bias, the stud. And he gets some room. And he gets through. And he is gone. DeMonte Bias takes it 70-plus yards to the house. And Losinger takes the lead 6-0. Huge run there by Demonte Bias. As I was saying, he holds it off from San Jose State, um, and he is really sh showing why there. 
just um, explosive speed, really quick change of directions. He uh, got the handoff, found a hole, and he was gone. So Lusinger up six to zero now. Not the way the Cubs wanted to start the game. And you know those big plays really are demoralizing. That's what takes the really takes the air out of a defense. And you know, um, short drives like that really not good. You don't get your guys enough rest. You know the offensive line is probably tired from the last drive, and now they have to go right back out there again. So really, just not the ideal start this uh, Cubs defense, this Wolf Pack wanted to have. Looks like Losinger is going to go for two here. Oh, number 55 there for the Olympians definitely jumped offside. So with the offsides call, false start call, let's see if they decide to go for it. Moving back to the eight-yard line, it looks like they're going to uh, kick it here. Now they're going for uh, the, the kick here. Definitely a smart choice. Eight yard, two point conversion would be kind of a tall order. Let's see if this Cubs defense can get in there and uh, block it. Maybe some uh, trickery afoot here as they huddle up there, so. I would keep an eye on that. So this, uh, all of a sudden with that penalty, this PAT, normally a gimme shot, turns into a bit of a longer kick, especially at the high school level. But he's able to knock it through. And Losinger takes a 7-0 lead. So with 6 minutes and 11 seconds left in the first quarter, uh, the Olympians are up. So let's see how this, uh, this, this Cubs offense can respond. You know, definitely a disappointing drive. Great field position, and then... You know, to go four and out, really not what they wanted to do. But, you know, it's not its not the end of the world. It's very early in this game, and the Cubs are going to be able to, they have time to get it back in there and, 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 and put a good drive together and, and hopefully tie this game. You know, I'd love to see the Cubs rely on their strong offensive line, you know, hand the ball off, let run, uh, let, let running back, let our running backs, like Sean, Morris, let them cook a little bit, but um, also a very talented receiving core, so can't blame the Cubs for throwing the ball, wanted to throw the ball. So Olympians getting ready to boot this ball away back to the uh, Cubs here, and the kick is going to be straight out of bounds. So that's going to be a flag, and the Cubs are going to get another good drive with good field position. And they're going to start at the 40-yard uh, line, I believe. So this Cubs offense getting back on the field. Nile leading the huddle. Referred to as TK by those who know him. This Cubs offensive line features a rare thing that you don't always see, and that's the uh, there's two brothers playing the offensive line. We have sophomore Nate Turk and uh, senior Ryan Turk, and these are two just as they hand the ball off to Morris. Morris is going to find a little room there. He's going to get a six-yard, four-yard gain. These Turk brothers, you know, uh, Ryan committed to play football at Dartmouth, obviously a standout individual on and off the field, and Nate, too, he can get it done uh, in, the, in the classroom as well. He's actually the sophomore class president. So he serves on student council. So this Turk family, uh, one of scholar athletes and a family that really just embodies what Loyola football and what Loyola in general is all about. So Niall now in the shotgun, he's motioning to uh, Scott Taylor, the tight end there. Taylor going to come in motion to the other side. That's number one, Khalil Cueva out wide. Holds an offer from UNLV. Ta Niall's going to find it, and he's going to throw it. Bit of a low throw, and it's going to be incomplete. He's trying to throw the ball to uh, Morris, the running back, but honestly, it didn't look like the play was really going anywhere. So, you know, incomplete, but it wasn't. So, 
So this Cubs offense, which has been struggling so far, uh, looking to get it done here, third and long. Niall in the shotgun there, Morris in the backfield. Nelson Pye, the center. And he's going to call in motion uh, Luke Hyen, that's the senior. Niall gets the snap, drops back in the pocket. He's going to look downfield, takes a deep shot, and just nowhere near the receiver, and it's going to be picked off. So the losing uh, forces another turnover, and Loyola's offensive woes continue. Um, really just a, a poor start to the game for the Cubs, giving up that big touchdown and giving up that, tu and, uh, giving up that turnover. Two turnovers, one turnover on downs and one interception, but... You know, at the end of the day, it's the Cubs are just not getting it done so far. Granted, this losing her team is good, but uh, I don't think the Cubs are really playing to their strengths right now, to be honest. So it's going to be Olympians' ball as uh, Alexander's in the shotgun is going to give the ball back. To uh, DeMonte Bias, the guy who just ripped off that big play. So Jake Ariano there with the tackle, another senior, another, and uh, who helped them was Isaiah Sanders. Isaiah Sanders committed to play defense next fall for the uh, UC Davis Aggies uh, up in uh, up by Sacramento. So he's another just uh, standout for the Cubs on that defensive side of the ball, but you know. Individual players that are great are awesome, but it's all about how this team comes together and plays as a unit. And so far today, uh, they've really been struggling to find their rhythm defensively. As Alexander's going to give another pass to uh, number one, that's Dahan Kalaman. Dejan Kalaman is going to get a few yards there, and it's going to be a uh, flag down on the play. Let's see what the uh, refs call this. Mm, it's going to be holding on the Olympians. So the Cubs get a break there. Definitely get a break um, against this high-powered offense. They're lucky and very glad to get any uh, any uh, yards that they can take, any yards back that they can take. So it's second and 12 now for the Olympians. Uh, definitely behind the chains a little bit. But let's see what they can do here. Alexander. The quarterback lines up in the shotgun on his flank is DeMonte Bias, standout running back. Alexander's going to take the snap, give it to Bias, and gets, oh, it's a play action play, and, oh, and Alexander rips it off, and he is gone. He is off to the races. It's a race between him and number 21. That's Brock Borquez, and Alexander's going to walk it in untouched as he stumbles down there. It's going to be a late hit on the Cubs as Alexander went flying after the play. Oh, man. So another huge touchdown run for the uh, Olympians here. And to, to cap it off, the Cubs commit an infraction there. Wow, so a really good play action there. Had me fooled, and it had number 15, Scott Taylor, fooled as well. Taylor went in for the tackle. He got the pressure there, but uh, didn't have the ball. So the Olympians now up two scores on the Cubs here in the early goings as they're going to try and kick another field goal. I guess the flag got taken back. Some sort of delay here on the field. Refs looking to sort this out as Losinger gets ready to kick this PAT. And here we go. So it's been all Olympians so far. They're playing like Olympians. Um, and they're really just having their way with this Cubs defense. And honestly, with this Cubs offense as well. They're just having their way with the Cubs. It's really been a poor showing so far. I think they're going for two, actually. Number seven, Demonte Bias is going to take it, and he's going to waltz into the end zone. You know, this Cubs defense, they really need to uh, dig deep here and find some grit, find some tenacity and find a way to start getting some stops and putting some stops together because, you know, it's really looking like the Olympians are just walking all over these Cubs. 
as the kick return unit comes out for Loyola. These Cubs need a long drive because if they keep getting these three and outs, this Cubs defense is going to get more tired and it's just going to get exponentially worse here for Loyola. Um, okay, so the penalty was enforced. It's going to be enforced on the kickoff, not on the PAT. Uh, that was um, number 45, Chris Capetta, I think, had the penalty. So some early struggles here for the Cubs. Uh, they're getting the ball back, 3.56 left in the first quarter, and they're looking to, you know, get something going on offensively. But they've really struggled so far, and it's it's going to be a challenge because this losing your team is just so big, so physical. Cubs had a tough loss week one to a really good Damian team and uh, had a nice win against Culver City last week, but... All due respect, that's a Culver City team that we should be beating. And uh, look, it's a really good Damian team that we lost to. Um, but that's a Culver City team that we should have beaten and we did beat. But um, I think I think this losing her game is a really good test because it's a, I think it's the most evenly matched game the Cubs have had so far. So the Cubs get the ball back there on their own 20 after the touchback. Thomas Nile and this Cubs offense, they're looking to uh, get something, get anything really going. Nile's going to hand the ball off to Morris. Morris tries to find some room, and it's just nothing, nothing doing. Gets maybe a yard. Sean Morris, another transfer, I believe. Uh, sophomore, so another uh, young guy getting some playing time here on the varsity squad, and he's won the starting job. But, um, yeah, this losing her team, they're, they're really just getting a lot of penetration here on the Cubs. They're just penetrating the Cubs and getting in there. So second and nine here for the Cubs. Line, uh, Niles going to line up under center. Morris in the backfield. Nile takes a snap. He's going to get off to Morris again. Morris. Flags come in as Morris gets three yards. Flags come raining in on that play. And we'll see what the flag is. It's going to be a holding penalty against Loyola. Man, they're just shooting themselves in the foot here. Um, this Cubs team, they're better than how they're playing right now. They're, there's a lot of, lot of skill on this team right now. And, and so far it's just uh, not been shown, but this is a team that has a lot of really talented guys, a lot of great guys on and off the field, and and, and right now they're just uh, not playing up to their full potential. As now it's gonna drop back in the backfield. He's gonna look deep downfield, takes a shot, and there's gonna be a lot of contact there. Let's see if there's a flag. And it looks like there's going to be a pass interference uh, flag there, so Cubs are gonna get, some 15, get uh, 15 yards back there. So with the P.I. call on losing her, it's going to be uh, Cubs get a first set of downs, and it's going to be a 15-yard game. I like I like that play call. You know, let your guys uh, m let your guys make plays, and if and if they, if they get fouled, they get fouled, and that's going to be another that's a game. But I really like giving uh giving Khalil Quay with that downfield opportunity. He's a really talented player, one of the fastest kids, if not the fastest at the whole school, uh, track star in the in the 100 and 4 by one. So, you know, I like that giving uh. Khalil an opportunity to make a nice play. Duke lined up. Jared Puto lined up out centers. are going to give the ball to Morris, and Morris gets met at the line of scrimmage and driven back. Morris going to lose, maybe, maybe gain a yard there, but uh, nothing really doing there on that play. It's going to be third down and six. I guess they didn't get the first down because they were so far behind the uh, chains. 
So third and six here now, looking to make something happen. Cubs line with four wide. Line up with four wide. Now takes the snap. He's going to drop back in the pocket. He's going to look for Jared Puto, and it goes just through his hands. So Duke unable to make the catch there. Uh, and it's going to be the punt team coming out here for the uh, Cubs again. Back to punt is number 19. That's A.J. Schultz there for the Cubs. Schultz's first time being used today. Schultz gets the snap. It's a good one. Kick is away, and he gets a nice little kick there. Let's see if it gets a good bounce there for the Cubs. It's going to take a Loyola bounce, and it's going to keep rolling all the way down to the losing 30 as it is down there by number 45. Chris Capetta. So it's going to be losing a ball again. And uh, Cubs are looking to uh, stop what has been happening from happening again. Is losing her so far has just been running it all over Loyola's front, front three. Just big play after big play. So definitely looking for a uh, change of outcome here for the Cubs. A minute 42 left here in the first quarter at Smith Field. So far it's been all Olympians, but the Cubs defense looking to change that with a good uh, good defensive possession here. These just a lot of athleticism here on this Olympian team with uh, Jair Alexander at QB and DeMonte Bias at running back. Those are two really, really high level players. They're gonna give the ball to Bias. Bias makes one man miss and gets tackled after a gain of about three yards. But a uh, lot of athleticism here on this team. As Bias, as we saw, we've all saw, we've seen both Bias and Alexander uh, rip off absolutely huge plays so far. And it's just, it's just, um, there's going to be officials timeout as number 97 is down with an injury. That's Max Meyer, the sophomore. So uh, one of these Cubs young studs getting minutes here on the varsity squad. He's down with a little injury, but he's able to walk off on his own support, and uh, that's something you love to see. Able to get up on his own, and that's always a, a great thing to see. So this Cubs defense is coming out again. Looking to get it done. Subbing in for Meyer is going to be number 57. It's Declan Olinong. Losing her uh, for being so far away. They traveled pretty well. They brought their band, they brought their cheer squad, and they brought quite a few fans. So uh, good for the Olympians. Definitely a strong football program, both in support and on the field. As these Cubs get ready, it's going to be uh, Alexander takes a snap. He's going to pitch it to Bias. Bias cuts to his left, makes one man miss, gets maybe three or four yards. Demonte Bias, only a few yards there, but just showed his explosive speed as it's going to be entering the final minute of this first quarter with uh, 54 seconds remaining. Scott Taylor and Chaz Austin there in the tackle. It's going to be third and four here for the Olympians. About to be joined in the booth by fellow commentator Dash Broin. Had some difficulties getting here, but uh, excited to be working with him for the remainder of this game as Alexander's going to take the snap and give it to Bias. Bias gets some room, and is he going to get the first down? This Cubs defense, they can't bring him down. Looks like he's going to be short as the refs are signaling for a fourth down here. And uh, as time expires in the first quarter, let's see if they elect to go for it. I think they're going to let this clock run down and then make their decision. So a quarter done here at Smith Field. It's been all Olympians so far. 15-0 losing her. We'll be right back at the start of the second quarter.
excited to uh, get underway and help me announce this game. As it's going to be losing her football, they have the ball there. They're going to punt it away, though. Number really oh. weak punt there. Absolute sky ball right there. Going to take a Loyola bounce, and Loyola's are going to have great field position as losing or falls in it at the, f at, uh, at the Cub 45-yard line. So the Cubs with only 55 yards to go to get to the end zone here. See if they can do it. You know, Frank, I'm, I'm really liking how Thomas Nile has been playing this season. Number nine is looking really good out there. Definitely, he's got some strengths. Uh, got a tough call with that interception, tough play there. But, um, yeah, Nile's certainly a dynamic player, and he's a player that the Cubs are going to love to see develop. You know, he's still green as a varsity player. It's only his third varsity start. But uh, they, if, you're, if you're the Loyola coaching staff, you've got to be really happy with how Nile's playing. Yeah, I definitely agree. Niles going to take the shot in the, sh in the, in the shotgun. He's going to step up in the he's pocket. Gonna he's going to find Gerapito. Duke in the shotgun. And Duke gets some room and makes one man, runs through one tackle before being brought down at the 37-yard uh, line. So the Cubs with maybe the first uh, first signs of life here as they find uh, star junior wide receiver Duke Gerapito. Duke, of course, had the huge play last weekend, and it's going to be Duke there with that big game. Yeah, you know, I'm really liking Duke. He's, ar he's already got some offers, so... Very, very good player for the Cubs and big offseason pickup there. Huge offseason pickup. And, you know, we've seen the transfer portal become uh, more and more relevant in the NCAA, but transfers are definitely just as relevant in the high school level as now he's going to give the ball to another play action. He's going to find number one, Khalil Cueva. Cueva turns on a dime, makes one man miss, and uh, gains maybe three or four yards there. So the Cubs showing some sparks offensively as that's two uh, uh, productive plays there in a row. Dash, you're, you're obviously a sophomore. What do you have to say about these young uh, Cub players that are forming a huge part of this team? You know, I think I think the future of the program is really good. We have Max Meyer um, on defense. We have Nelson Pye at center. And Jack Thomas, when his time comes, he's going to be a very solid Nile player. Nile takes the a snap, gives it off to Morris, and Morris gets some yards, and he's going to get the uh, – it's going to be brought down just sort of the first down. It's going to bring up a third and short here for the Cubs. Yeah, you know, this is a really young team. You got Brandon Lockhart, obviously. Yeah, definitely. One of the best players um, in, the, in, the, in the country, honestly. And Josh Gallagher, too, another another great receiver. Josh Gallagher, there. another two-sport athlete here for the studs, also a great soccer player. Really just an athletic guy. They're going to give the ball to uh, number 24. It's Justin Smith, the senior running back, and he's going to barrel forward and get the first down there for the Cubs. So the Cubs moving the chains for the first time as they're approaching, knocking on the door, getting in the red zone. Let's see what they can do. Yeah, you know, touchdown here would be really big for the Cubs' momentum going into the half. Hopefully they can spark a comeback. Definitely. Once you fall down three scores, that becomes a really tough uh, barrier to surmount. Brutal. Brutal. Niles going to line up in the shotgun here. He's going to call Khalil Cueva into motion. Got trips Niles right. Niles gets the snap. He's going to look He sees Cueva downfield. Down Cueva wide open in the end zone. Oh, oh. and he cannot haul it in. Nile with just a bit of an overthrow there. Great, great play call there, though. He was wide open. Great play call, giving Cueva the number one, uh, number one receiver on this team, giving him that one-on-one -on -one matchup. There is a flag on the play, though, so we will see what that's all about. Yeah, you know, Cueva's been really solid for the Cubs these last couple of years. So it's going to be a personal foul there on losing her, so the Cubs get another 15-yard uh, penalty. So Cubs get a fresh set of downs, and they're in the red zone. Definitely the most promising possession the Cubs have had so far. But Dash, uh, I really love that play call. What, uh, what do you think about that? Given the dynamic players like Khalil, the opportunity to make plays. Yeah, you know, I really like the trips right where you have Cueva just taking out the outside. You know, you give him a chance to move in the open space. And maybe something happens there. We're going to see Duke line up on the left here. Duke lined up on the left. He's a big physical presence. So they're going to give the ball to, to Morris. Morris. Morris gets brought down in the backfield, nothing doing there. Look, I, I really like, um, what I'd love to see here is giving the ball to one of our big guys. Throw it up for Duke or for Scott Taylor, let him make a play on it. Yeah, you know, I'd, I'd love to see that. I think one-on-one, -on -one we have some great receivers, and I think we can just one-on-one, -on -one we're, we're nightmares. 100%. This team is a, a matchup nightmare, and if they can just exploit those, that's going to be a huge asset for this team. Obviously, a lot of skill on this team. It's just a matter of putting it all together. Second 11 here for the Cubs. Niles in the backfield. Morris next to him. Number four. It's Luke Hyen, his brother. Also on this squad. 
Also a dual sport athlete. Also a dual sport athlete. Now it's going to take the snap. He rolls right. Sees he looks Quaver. and he finds Quaver. Quaver's going to get some yards, but gets brought down at around the 11-yard line. Mark Hyen, he's a football player at Loyola, but, you know, he's also a super rare thing in this uh, high school sports world as he is a professional so soccer, soccer player. player. Yeah, down in OC. Yeah, plays for Orange County Soccer, soccer Club of the, the uh, League One here in America. So that's really impressive. Uh, Hyen, obviously, just an elite-level athlete. Yep. Big future for the young man, Huge. Mark. And, and Luke uh, getting playing time here on, on the uh, football team as well, so he's obviously no slouch either. Niall's going to line up in the shotgun. He's going to send number six, Sean Morris, in motion, so Niall alone in the backfield, and there's going to be flag raining in. Maybe false start on the Cubs there. But that's that's uh, what I would guess, yes. False It's going to be a five-yard penalty, and, you know, these self-inflicted wounds really aren't helping this Cubs team, especially when they're trying to come from behind here in a situation like this. Yeah, you know, penalties have been something kind of all season. I mean, as we saw in the Culver City there game last week, that was just absolutely brutal in the second half, just really did themselves in with a lot of penalties. Definitely. When you're a, a, um, a scrappy team like the Cubs and you need, you need every yard you can get, every uh, break you can get, Plays like that are just really just uh, bad for you. Third and 12 here for the Cubs. Duke Duke's lined up on the close sideline. Let's see if he gets a matchup here. Definitely taller than the cornerback on him as they send Luke Hyen in motion. Nile in the backfield takes a snap. He's going to drop back, look to pass. Takes a deep shot into the end zone. Nowhere, near a, <laughs> nowhere near a Loyola receiver as that's picked off by number three, Malik Stacy. And Stacy's going to keep going. He's still on his feet. And he's running all the way to the 33-yard line. As a flag comes in, who knows what that is, but flags are flying all over the place. But, man, that was not a good throw. No, that's a that's a brutal break for the Cubs there. You know, Thomas and I only, like Frank said, only this is only his third varsity start. So, you know, it's he doesn't have a lot of experience, so it's tough for him. But he, he's a good player, and he Great. has a bright future with the right coaching. Great player. He just uh, – needs some salt he's just uh really really raw talented one of the hardest workers out there but you know it's 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 um it's nothing quite prepares you for playing in a situation like this other than doing it so you know Niles only going to continue to improve um, he's only going to continue to get his iq up get his uh, arm strength up although it's already very formidable as it is but uh yeah look for nile just to uh, improve exponentially as the season goes on yeah definitely watch out for him come senior year with Hopefully getting a lot of good offers there. Yeah. Yeah, you know, this junior class, I would I, I would say is very underrated. You know, on the defensive side of the ball, you have Henry Cassani, you have Scott Taylor, um, you have Desi Valdez. These are all standout players. And, you know, um, not one of them has a single Division One offer. No, yeah. I mean, I think Loyola, like, they get noticed a lot. So I think what, just give them time and let them – have a couple more games under the belt. I, I definitely th see some offers coming that way. Definitely. Henry Cassani, let's do a little spotlight on him. Um, absolute just uh, standout athlete. Yeah, you know, he's two-way uh, sport player. He plays lacrosse and and uh, and football. Started on both as a, as, a, uh, as a sophomore. Not an easy thing to do at a lacrosse program like Loyola. Yeah, 100% agree. You know, Cassani may... He may commit for lacrosse if it's not football, but he's an absolute monster. 100%. It's a 25-yard penalty on Losinger. Not sure what they did there. That's a huge break for the Cubs. Huge break for the Cubs. Is Losinger's going to have a tough field position. But, you know, i got to think that Coach Cassani, she's a really big fan of whenever you can get a lacrosse guy to come play in this team because the culture of loyal lacrosse just creates um, just creates people with who are not afraid of hard work and are willing to put in long hours, put in uh, put in uh, whatever it takes to get the win. It's because that's the lacrosse that – that's the culture that uh, lacrosse coach Jimmy Burrell creates. And yeah, I mean – give it to Bias, and Bias finds some room. He's going to gain about six or seven yards there. Yeah, m me and you both played JV lacrosse that last year, and the work is just truly brutal, you know. So I, I definitely think Coach Kasani is a fan of those lacrosse players. Definitely. You know, it's interesting. Bias is a receiver, but he's lined up in the backfield there. Yeah. So. Just truly shows how he's a plug-and-play type of guy. You can put him anywhere, and he's just, just going uh, to be able to make a difference. It's Alexander also has been very impressive so far, in my opinion. When he broke off that huge touchdown run, but he's also just looked really in command of this field. He's not one of the bigger players out there, but 
he's uh he's making up for his lack of physical size with his just mental and uh, spatial. Size. No, you know only five eleven. Oh man, as a junior, this is brutal, right? Oh, oh, that big break for the Cubs. Big there. break for the Cubs. Bias was getting some steam under him. He was thundering down the field as flags are flying and Brandon Lockhart and number one. That's Dejan Calamone exchanged some words. So yep. B-Lock, the number one player in California, has something to say to these uh, losing or Olympians. Yeah, number 42, that's Jacob Farag, uh, senior defensive lineman, seven off the field. Farag's very solid player. Definitely, definitely another one of those seasoned veterans making up this senior team. Yeah, you see, you see Brandon getting chirped by Coach Scani over there. You know, player with a lot of talent like that, you would, you don't really want to see that happen t to a, to a young man like that. Just gotta get in control of his emotions. It'll be yeah, Lockhart. All over Lockhart, coaches. honestly, 100% a guy we're gonna see play on Saturdays. But I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. Say he's a guy we might see play on Sundays. Sundays, yeah, definitely. You know, like you said, number one player in California for his class. So. If he can miss somewhere big like maybe Georgia, C or Bama, you know, I definitely yeah. think we could see him as a second, first round yeah. pick. Lockhart shown a lot of interest in Oregon, and they've um, uh, the interest is mutual. As we're gonna give the ball to Bias again, and he gets wrapped up in the backfield, oh. but Cubs can't bring him down, and he breaks up and he breaks through another tackle before getting oh. taken down by Scott, by number 21, Brock uh, Bajorquez. So number 40 there, Isaiah Sanders, the Davis commit. Wrapped him up in the backfield, but uh, I guess it was a bit of an arm tackle. Couldn't bring him down. Henry Cassani, number five, the linebacker, uh, probably telling him that you got, you know, you got to, uh, got to make those tackles. Got to lead it. Got to lead with your pad. When yeah. you when you get to a player like Bias, when you get penetration, you got to take advantage. So it's going to be Alexander again in the shotgun. Oh, uh, it's gonna be an offsides penalty there on the Cubs. Oh no! They no, didn't call I guess it. They it, didn't I see guess it. he uh, didn't get in the neutral zone. It wasn't a neutral zone infraction, so it's legal. <laughs> Olin on there, number fifty-seven was sure he had just committed a penalty. Alexander in the shotgun is gonna take the snap, drop back to pass. He's gonna Alexander's take it gonna deep. let it fly. Whoa, massive pi there by number twenty-one. Whoa, Brock Bajorquez just completely grabbed onto number fourteen. Certainly not something you can do. No, you know. We, I feel like the Cubs got to be more disciplined there because we had our safety there, and I think he could have made a play. So I, I just think the Cubs got to be more disciplined on defense there. Definitely. Got, they got to get something going here, though. 15-0, almost halftime. Not looking great for the Cubs. So. Not looking amazing. But, you know, we're going to give a spotlight to another uh, young standout player for the Cubs. That's number 44, sophomore Ronan Zamorano. Dash is a classmate of Ronan. What do you have to say yeah, about yeah. the young man? Um. Yeah, Ron Ronan's a great kid, very very good player. I mean, as you can tell, if you've w been a Cubs football fan all season, he's making making plays, but also just very good kid in the classroom and stuff. So yeah, definitely Alexander in the backfield as the Olympians have the ball at midfield. Alexander's gonna get the snap, give it off to. Uh, he's gonna take it oh, himself it's from a read the option. option. Oh, and he breaks this he one off. Bust and he one out. <laughs> oh, nice there to get off the block and uh, get the tackle. Big tackle there by number twenty-one, Brock Bajorquez, because. Uh, he was about to bust that one out and take that one all the way to the house. It's another flag. A lot of flags here. It's going to be a flag against losing her, I think. So another break there for the Cubs. But this has been a penalty-infested game. Coming back again, you know. So losing her, uh, not what they wanted to do. They got a great little run there by uh, Alexander, but it's all going to be for naught as it comes back. Yeah, the Cubs really got to watch Alexander there in the backfield because they don't want to they don't want to see him bust another one out downfield again. So it's going to be second and 12 here for the Olympians. Going to be looking to get some yards and just extend that lead going into the halftime. If they can get up 18, that would be huge. 
three scores. I mean, you got to agree, Dash. Big difference between a two-score game and a three-score game. Uh, yeah, 100% agree. I really think the Cubs got to get something going here on their defense. They're a little sloppy all game. but Jair going to give the ball to uh, – it's going to be – Oh, yeah. when he's laid out by number 40, Isaiah Sanders laying the wood. Big hit, big hit by Sanders there, you know. That's really big for the Cubs. You don't want to see him take that But it's going to be another flag. It's going to be another flag on losing her. Big again. Ball start there on losing her. They're going back. They're going back. That should be. So penalties have certainly been a huge aspect of this game on both sides of the ball. You know, Loyola sh shot themselves in the foot a couple times, but losing her not doing themselves any favors with this. No, definitely not. Yeah, I th I'd say penalties have broke both teams on both sides. You know, not really, not really going one way with the calls. Yeah. Love to see that though. That way, there's no excuses. You know, good refs. Yeah, yeah. You gotta find the right balance. I feel like you can't just uh, throw a flag on every play. You gotta let some chippiness be it as football, but you know, you obviously want to keep everyone safe. Yeah, definitely. As um, number four, Alexander, he's gonna line up under center here. First and 17 here for the Olympians. We'll we'll see what happens here. Hopefully the Cubs can get something going here. You know, just rough Alexander, all game. Alexander's going to take the snap and find his little man number one. Receiver. It's going to be a little wide receiver Blair. screen, and he's going to get a few yards there. It's a you good know, little game. I, li I like the screen plays or the run plays on first down. Just get a couple yards. Start 100%. off. Start off. Start off right. Definitely. Definitely. So this Cubs defense showing some grit here, digging in and saying, you shall not pass to these losing our Olympians. Yeah, I, I think they're going to make something happen here. Let's see. That certainly would be huge. As Alexander's going to take the snap, it's going to be a play action. He's going to find his man, number one. Oh, and no. number one breaks this one off, gets some room, and he's finally taken down there. Nice open field tackle by... Uh, Number 20, Jake Ariano. It's not going well for the Cubs now. Another flag, though. It's going to be on the Cubs, though. So a flag there on the Cubs. Roughing the passer on the Cubs. So that's going to tack on another 15 yards to that already substantial gain. Just really not what the Cubs wanted to have happen here. Already down two scores. No, Lusinger is... They're a pretty good program. They got a lot of talk. They they also have a bunch of young. I don't know if injured right now, but very big name there in the football community. Yeah. Oh, bunch of young, certainly. He's a guy who people have had their eye on for years. But uh, he's injured right now, not making uh, not making an appearance tonight on the field. But so it's losing her team now in, in the red zone. As flags come flying in, what the heck is going on? These refs just got to let them play a little, you know? It's going to be another infraction on illegal substitution on losing her. Good break for the Cubs there. Hopefully they can take advantage of it, though, and hold them to at least three. Clock continues to run here. It's going to be first and 15. You know, you know, offensive coordinators just hate falling behind the chains like that. You know, you don't really have a play lined up for such long yardage situations. No, definitely it's gonna not. Be another pass. Oh, it's, it's going to be a little wide receiver handoff. It's Maxwell Young. Young tries to get the edge, but he's not going to get there as Big more, hit. more flags come flying in. I mean, Dash, what is going on? I have no idea. Like, this is this is completely outrageous, you know? Flags. I mean, it seems like literally every single play there's a flag. It just seems uh, crazy. Yeah. I say let them play a little. 100%. It's going to be another break, though, for the Cubs. Is losing her. It seems like they're taking two steps forward, one step back here. They have a big gain and then just uh, end up going backwards with these penalty infractions. First and 20 here for Losinger. Hopefully the Cubs can apply some pressure here. It seems like Andrew Definitely. Alexander's just had all day in the pocket. Losing her, looking to break uh, the Cubs back here and just really um, put one in the end zone. Yeah, definitely. Because that would be a huge demoralizing if losing her can punch one in. Losing her continue just to use their big men up front and just ram it down the Cubs' throat uh, uh, with the run. Yeah, I mean, good stop for the Cubs there. At least they didn't let them take it too deep there. Yeah, that no, was yeah. really bad for the Cubs. But you know these losing her play call, it's just it's it's saying, 
we think we're bigger than you, we think we're stronger than you, and we're going to show it. Yeah, definitely. 100% agree. You know the Cubs, they're not they're not the biggest team and uh on the on the front five there. They're not that no. big of a team. No. They got some size with Nate Turk and Champ Westbrooks, but you know. But uh, apart from that, it's the the sophomore Max Meyer. He's a, he's a big kid, but he's not he's not gigantic by any means. No. But he plays fast. He's a good good fast player. I think honestly uh their skill positions on defense are some of the better uh, players. You know the linebackers and and defensive oh, yeah. backs are those are some really, those are some big kids. Scott Taylor, you see that kid, and that is a big kid. He's, a, I'm sure he benches well over 250 pounds. Yeah, you see, you see Scott Taylor walking down the hallways. That's not someone you want to mess with. No. Wouldn't work out too well for you. No. Seven fifty PM here at Smithfield. A minute and thirty two seconds left to go in this first half of play. Yeah, hopefully the Cubs can get something going here or Losinger's gonna have a fun ride back to Lawndale on the bus. Lawndale. Alexander making some audibles back there. Alexander really just showing he is in control of this field. Second and 20. He's going to play, play action. But Taylor Taylor's gets some gonna penetration. Get to him. Alexander's going to tuck it and run, and he gets a lot of yards there. Wow. And take it all the way to about the 10 yard line. So Alexander continues to impress. They got to get some QB contain going, like I'd be said in Madden. You know, just Alexander is very elusive, getting outside of the pocket. I mean, Taylor did a great job there of getting pressured him, but it's just no one was there to stop Alexander from getting dicey. Yeah. Alexander really a slippery presence out there on the field. Completely agree. So this Cubs red zone defense looking to uh, dig deep and find some inner strength here and just uh, not let these uh, Olympians punch it in. It's going to be a handoff. No, it's going to be a play action. action. They get there with the cornerback blitz. And it's going to be number 15, Scott Taylor there with the sack. Big sack for Taylor there. You know, I don't I don't hate the timeout option here. Give give the young Nile a give the young Nile a minute to march down the field and hopefully get something going at the half. I think they did take a timeout. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. I agree. I like that option. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I like that. They're showing a lot of confidence in this offense. They're saying, we trust you to go get get us some points. Yeah, you know, I think this drive will be a big wake-up call for Nile to see what happens the rest of the game. I really think it sets the tone. If Nile can get something going here, I think the Cubs have a good chance of bringing this game back. But I, li I'm, I like the situation. A minute, They'll have the ball with a minute left in the half, and they got weapons like Duke and Khalil on the outside yeah. there. I really just want to see, uh, want to see giving those guys them one-on-one -on -one opportunities, you know. Definitely, yeah. Lusinger has also been doing a good job though with their coverage of not letting that happen. Yeah. For sure. Fourth and nineteen, so certainly a long yard situation. It looks like they're going for they're it. They're going for it. This would be big for the wow. Cubs to stop them here. You but know, we saw some uh, some exciting fourth down play calling in the game last night. As oh, he wants to scramble. And he finds his oh man my. number one, finds him wide open. Is he going to get to the end zone? Is he going to get six? He reaches out to the left side. He gets a block, and he's almost there. Is that he into the end zone? That might be a touchdown. And he, no, they're marking him down there at the, at the one. one. But a brutal play for the Cubs. Wow. Yeah, couldn't be said better there, Frank. Nothing. Not, I mean, nothing, nothing to say. <laughs> nothing to say about that one. Oh, man. Heartbreaking. Fourth and 19, and he brings it all the way to the one-yard line. Just something you really, that's just, to be honest with you, Dash, that's just something that can't happen. No, completely agree there. I think Coach Kasani is going to have a real talk with them in the locker room. Going to be very upset. I think he has to talk with them and say, what what kind of football team do you want to be? Yeah, you you want to be the type of team that rolls over in the second half when you're down big, or do you want to be a team that, you know, 
shows says, "Hey, we're playing Cub football, and we're gonna we're not gonna let you just come onto our home field and just walk all over us." No, yeah, I think this this second half will show a lot for what what type of team the Cubs will be heading down the season. Yeah. But you know, high school football really fast game a lot can change. Yeah, definitely. You know. Anything can happen in high school football. The players aren't experienced. It's very entertaining to watch. Yeah, so, you know, even two scores, two scores for sure, let alone three scores, you know, that, or leads like that can just evaporate like water on a hot day. Yeah, I mean, did you, I mean, watching the game last week versus Culver City, they almost, they almost fought back and came back in the game, so. Yeah, yeah. I can't, think, can't I think, take anything for granted. I think Loyola can handle them. You know, they just got to, really get the offense going and this is very out of the normal for the for the defense they're normally just very punishing yeah so losing her here with the ball in the one yard lady to to number seven Sabar. oh my gosh bias somersaults into the end zone there wow just a show of athleticism he just jumps hurdles the uh, Loyola defense there somersaulting flipping in impressive play Brutal touchdown for the Cubs there. They really needed to hold them. They had Lusinger had the Cubs had them at fourth and nineteen there, and that's just that really just can't happen. Like Frank said, and the Lusinger band and the Lusinger fans are loving it. Playing yeah. all I do is win, rubbing salt in the wound of this explosive first half. Yeah, you know, pretty pretty big turnout for Lusinger though. Definitely on the road, you know, I think. I think that makes it a little easier for them to play. And they're going to go for two with the fake. And they get it. But flags come in. But I think they got it. Helmet come off. But I think they got it. So Bias taking a snap there at quarterback. Yeah. He jumps over the whole defensive line as running back. Supposedly plays receiver. And also taking snaps at QB. Yeah, you know, Bias just very punishing player. You know, if you got to really keep an eye on him or he's just going to penetrate us all game. It's going to be very bad for the Cubs. Yeah, well said. Not sure what that penalty is. Looks like it's going to be penalty on losing her. So looks like they're going to kick it away here, sending number 15 on there to kick after the penalty. Yeah, you know, losing Joe there, just really trying to add a cherry on top there with the <laughs> two-point conversion. Yeah. They they already have one. They're already up by more than three. Is it going to be another timeout? Yeah. Swear this last minute of the half has been the longest. Losinger sideline very very energetic. The cheerleaders are up on their feet. The fans are up. The so is that gonna be a loss of downs up? for Losinger? Why are they kicking it away? They didn't get another chance. I, I guess it's gonna be a loss of downs. Yeah, but I'm wondering if the penalty was a loss of downs, I guess so. Oh. Did they get it? I guess you no, but you don't get a redo, I guess. Oh wow. All right, you know. That's a break for the Cubs. Very big break for the Cubs, keeping it within three scores. I think TK, hopefully he can get something going here. Bring the ball all the way down the field. Yeah. Weird formation here, though, for Lusinger. But they're they're setting up now. Who knows, maybe they hit him with a surprise. James Widhelm checking in here for the Cubs. Widhelm, a junior, a uh, great guy. And really excited to see what he can do. He's just a guy with a really strong work ethic. He's a guy who's going to look to make a huge impact here. As the kick is away from losing her. Yeah. Pretty good kick. It's going to be fielded by. Oh, it's Muff. Muff. But but it's be, Puda. Is that. I think that's oh, Luke Hyen. Oh, Luke Hyen. He's take it out to the 25 yard line. They both were the F7s there. Confusing, but. Yeah, so 43.4 seconds remain. This is a huge. I think if the Cubs. I would love for the Cubs to come away with points here. Yeah, at least get three here, you know. At least they don't get wiped out in the first half. Do you know how much timeouts they have here, Frank? I think they have two, but. You know, I think they have one or two. Yeah. Yeah. So first down here for the Cubs, Niles going to line up in the shotgun. Number 50 pie. 
Nelson Pye, Been starting center. Yeah, good center. Sophomore, too. T Whoa. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's going to be returned for <laughs> six. Thomas Nile with his third uh, interception of the half. This one getting run back for six points. That just seemed like a not well-advised pass. You know, do they maybe switch things up in the second half and bring in the sophomore quarterback, Jack Thomas? I mean, we haven't seen a lot of any appearances from him this season yet, but... Look, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, something needs to be changed here for the Cubs. I don't know if it's the quarterback play, but... Man, yeah. that's, a, that's a really rough first half for uh, Niall and the Cubs offense. Bad communication there. I mean, it didn't look like the receiver was even ready for it. So No. It happens sometimes. Just off day for Nile, And they're going to go for two again. And they're, and they're gonna going get it. to get it. Oh, man. It's going to make the score 29-0 at halftime. Brutal. Imperative for the Cubs to get something going here. So seemingly only uh, 30 seconds ago, this Cubs kickoff return team was out in the field, and they're back. They didn't even mount a single successful offensive play. First play of the drive was a pick six. You know, with with how loser's kicker has been kicking it all day, Widhelm could maybe get the ball here. Yeah. Woodhelm hailing from Pacific Palisades, California, yep. a product of West L.A. He's a guy who, you know, has only improved since his freshman year. Good player, has a lot of drip too, so. Definitely. You know, I'd love to see this Cub team focus less on drip and uh, more on getting some points on the board here. Yeah. As Losinger gets ready to boot it away here with 35 seconds left in the half. This last minute of the half has felt really long. It's going to be Peter Sherino getting the kick. Oh, he's got some room, though. Makes a man miss. Good field Finally position for the Cubs. Finally tripped up there on the 40. Let's see if the Cubs can do anything. Is it Niall leading these Cubs back out there? Or is it Thomas? Looks like... You know, give Thomas a... Give JT a shot. That's what, this is what I say, you know. But it, it's going to be Nile. So Nile looking to avoid his fourth pick of the half. 28 seconds remaining here. Let's see if the Cubs are just going to play it safe and run the football. I mean, don't want another pick six, but. No. Yeah, it looks like they're just going to run this clock out. Give it to Morris. Oh, Morris, Morris makes a man miss, though. Yeah, and gets all the way past midfield up to the 46 yard line. 21 seconds left as the clock stops as they move the chains. It's going to be a timeout. Timeout by the Cubs there. They they have a chance here. They have some life, especially if they have another timeout. Get a little get a little play and get yeah. give the kicker a chance. For sure. Shout out to Delicious Eats. Yeah. Providing the food. They provide the food for us every single day Monday through Friday. Great food, you know. And they're here Friday night. Very putting, in, putting in those extra hours. Very good staff. Hard working. Hard working. Food's great. Check it out at halftime if you're here live listening to the coverage. Yeah. Yeah. Go, go get yourself a Sprite and a dog. Six bucks. Yeah. So this Cubs offense, they're going to get something going on. We got the Turks up front. We got Champ Westbrook's Nelson Pye. And uh, let's see what they can do. Oh, oh, it's, it's going to be an errant snap. Now he recovers in the back, but he's scrambling around. He's just going to toss just it away. Just going to toss it away. You know, you hate the, to see that happen to the young sophomore, Nelson Pye. Just bad snap there. Is that going to be a grounding call? It's going to be intentional grounding. Wow. Oh my God. Just can't. Nothing's going their way. Oh, wait. No. Roughing Whoa. the passer. So a break there for the Cubs. Not, I, di I didn't see any contact, did you? I did not know, but... I didn't see anyone even in the backfield, but that's a, certainly a break for the Cubs, and that maybe puts them in field goal range. range. yep. I mean, it, if they can get a six- or seven-yard gain here, they're certainly in field goal range. I would love to see these Cubs. I would love to see them target Jared Puto right now. Uh, yeah, I would love that. I like his matchup, too. Three's looking a little short there, you know. 
Duke Maybe standing at 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, get the inside release! But oh my Niall days. just gets mobbed in the backfield and lobs it up for no one. You know, we're going to hit a little player spotlight here. The, the Turk Twins. I was I, I was just talking about them in the first quarter, Dash. I was talking about how uh, Ryan committed to Dartmouth. Yep, Obviously a standout guy and Nate being class president. Yeah, Nate's Nate's a great ball player. You know, hopefully he can commit in the next, next year yeah, or so. Yeah. Look, I think players like the Turks... That's what the Ivy League love. Yeah, Great definitely. academics, great players. As Namo is going to drop back, roll right, looking for anyone to I get mean, open. I mean, you got to go deep here. I don't. It's going to be broken up, nearly picked off as this clock hits triple zeros. So the first half comes to an end. It's been all losing her so far. These Cubs are going to need to make some changes. And we hope to show you some points here for the Cubs in the second half. We'll be back.
Looked like we have some technical difficulties there, folks. Uh, we're back. Yeah, I think we might have been muted. We may there. have been muted. Sorry about that, folks. All right, so. But we're back, and it's second half football. Cubs looking to get something going. 29 0 is the score. 8 31 here at Smithfield with about nine minutes in the third. So, TK scrambling. Rolling out right. He's going to find Khalil. Khalil. Nice yep. little game. Nice little pickup there for the Cubs. Good start there for the Cubs. Come on. Looks to be a gain about five there, maybe? Yep, six, six yards. All right, they got to take a shot here, third and 15. And they're just, hit, they hit JG, but, oh. He's going to make a man make miss. A man he's going to get some, and he's, he's going to keep fight. moving. He's going to keep fighting. Look at Gallagher go. The young stud there for the Cubs. And I think he nice is game. going to move the change there. He certainly is going to move the change with a lot, of, a lot of margin to spare. Great play for Gallagher there. You know, I really... Josh is a great player. Who, who knows what his career path will be, whether it's soccer or football, but I think he's got a bright future in both. I mean, right. he's so talented. He's arguably the best player in this 2026 class other than Lockhart. Is they're going to move that ball? Give it to Morris, Keep I believe. pounding it up the gut with Morris. Yeah, just – Loyal is just – I think Kasani really sparked them in the half, and Loyal is just coming out here saying, we're going to pound it all second half and just yeah. demoralize you. Look, obviously Kasani, I'm sure he wasn't pleased with these Cubs – as that's going to be an offsides penalty there by uh, 64. I think that's Ryan Turk. No, I, I don't think it is. It is. No, it's Luke Harrison. Yep. The senior. You know, we've seen Harrison do that a couple times tonight. You wonder if Hatch or Kasani says something to him about that, you know? That's just not like the Cubs, you know? The school preaches discipline, so I, I don't I don't know where that's coming Niles from. Niles going to look for a short pass. Nothing doing. Nothing. He's going to throw, throw it away. Wow, that one, that one almost went on to Pico. That's Venice. Oh, Venice, my bad. <laughs> the lights of downtown are sh uh, glittering yeah. just past the visitor section. Truly, I think, one of the best views from a field in the CIF. Yeah, I think one of the best, best stadiums in all of high school football. You know, beautiful night here in downtown Los Angeles from Smithfield. 100%. As Niles going to drop back in the shotgun. Back. He's got some time. He's, he's got Khalil. Look for his man. Khalil. Good out route open. there. And he's going to pick open. up. He's going to take it all 20. the way up. And Khalil with authority. The, the boys Cubs. are getting hyped on the sideline. The sideline's loving it. The fans are loving it. And maybe the Cubs uh, looks like they may have something going here. Yeah, you know, you see you see the young sophomore Viegas, number 42, I believe, on the sideline, just getting absolutely amped about that play. Sonny, another lacrosse guy. Yeah. Great Give me official timeout. Great prospect there, Viegas. Definitely. Yeah, one of one of one of the best rookies for the lacrosse team this year. And he's also a very good football player, very good team on the player on the freshman team. Smith again with a good run, and Turk is getting a little aggressive there. Smith with a good run there. Yeah. It's Justin Smith, the senior running back. You know, one thing about this O-line is they're going to be gritty and protect the quarterback. Screen to Cueva. He makes a little juke move. Makes another one. Oh, he finally gets dropped up, but flags come flying in. We'll see what that's all about. Maybe a little head-on-head -head yeah, contact there. Yeah, it like it could be a targeting. That's what it looked like to me. Frank, if you're, if you're Hatch here, what's the play call? Is it throw it up deep? Look, I'm loving these short little plays. I'm loving just, you know, dishing the ball out to our guys, our athletic guys. It's going to be holding on the Cubs. Brutal. Yeah. Luke Hine getting checked in here. Cueva comes out of the game. And who knows? Maybe maybe they're drawing something up. High end. Good athletes. Got some speed. Is that a loser timeout? Not sure. Yeah, loser timeout. timeout. Yeah, you, the Cubs have been shut out all night, so I think points out of this drive is just big Huge. for them. Big momentum shifter. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Lusinger, Lusinger threw that pick too early on, so I think the Cubs have all the momentum in the world right now, and I think they're going to use it. They want to use it. Most definitely. The Lusinger marching band is up on the... Losinger, man, we, we said it earlier, they have traveled well. 
Yeah. A lot of losing are faithful here at Smithfield. Yeah, a lot of losing to losing to fans. Marching band is loud. Oh yeah. Cheerleaders are making some chants all night long, you know. Oh yeah. That certainly inspires the boys to play well. Definitely, Frank, you know. Nothing like birds in the crowd. Nothing like it. So this Cubs offense looking to come back out in the field led by number 72 champ Westbrook's the Pac-12 Arizona State Sun Devil commit. Although he won't be Pac-12 for long. No, I, I believe they're they're going to the Big 12. Yeah, I think they're going to the Big 12, yeah. yep. As Nile lines up in the shotgun, oh. he's got Morris behind him. As the wind gusts are starting to blow pretty strong here, Niles going to call a motion. He's going to give the play, play action, action to Morris, and there's no one open. He's going to hurl it deep downfield. He down hit Scott Taylor. Oh, oh, what a throw, Scott though. Taylor got turned around. He had Taylor wide open. Good job by Nile of getting that ball out with a lot of pressure. Lolani Potolokofina with the pressure there. So now it's third and long. Cubs are going to try and get something going here. But, you know, like we were saying earlier, it seems like the Cubs are going to treat every uh, drive here like a, a four, four down, down drive. drive. Yeah. 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 I think Kasani definitely mentioned something about that in the locker room. He had to have. Definitely. It's going to be a timeout, Loyola. You know. They gotta be more watchful with those timeouts. This could be big. Yeah, you know these Cubs. I was just about to remark these teams are both not afraid to use up some of these timeouts, which could be huge. But I don't know. Yeah, I think I think Kasani trusts his uh, his speedy outside receivers getting out of bounds to make something happen. The, the Cubs really need to get something going here. Definitely, in a, in a big way, in a big way. Yeah, something, something's big. Something big's gotta, gotta get landed here. You know, maybe a big gain for, for the Cubs. You know, TK Aaron went out to, like I said many times tonight, one of our speedy outside receivers, whether that's JG, Duke G, um, Khalil. You know, yeah. we got, got a lot of young, young prospects on the, on the outside. Definitely led by Khalil Cueva, obviously the senior, the senior obviously the yeah. veteran presence, who's obviously teaching them everything they know. Yeah, you know. Nile. Good. Nile on the shotgun. He's gonna take the snap. He's gonna drop back to pass. He's Pressure. Got someone there. there. He's gonna. He's gonna tuck it and run. It looks like, but he's not gonna get anywhere, and he's taken down. Good job by Nile of maybe getting back to the line of scrimmage, but still gonna be a loss of about maybe a half a yard. Yeah, you know, Khalil hasn't committed anywhere either, so. Maybe maybe we see that happening in a couple hey, you know, weeks. Hey, you know, his offer list isn't huge. I think he just holds one from UNLV. But, I mean, if oh, I'm yeah. a college coach, I look at this guy as a freak athlete. I mean, we're talking about a guy who I think can dunk, and he's 5'10". So, obviously, a guy is an athletic specimen and really fast and just dominates at the high school level. So Yeah, K Khalil's an absolute weapon. I think he does very well in the classroom, too. And um, if I'm a college coach, I, I see this guy and I think, well, he, he's got all the he's got all the talent. So hopefully we can just get him acclimated with our with our system. 100 percent. Khalil Cueva, as we were just talking about the man himself, he's lined up out wide on the losing. TK and Chalkin here drops TK back. TK drops back to pass. He's looking down. Good downfield. blocking. He's, he's got looking time. for late. He's Cueva, oh, but he's going to overthrow him by five or six yards. That's just brutal for the Cubs. That's two drives that they could have taken advantage of. Made this a 29-14 game. Still in the third, but they just couldn't get anything going there. Alexander coming out again. Alexander just had an absolute monster of a game right now. Just a bit more than halfway done here with this third quarter. Slow moving quarter. Yeah, very slow. Um. What what do you think Lusinger is going to do here, Frank? You think they're going to keep the foot on the gas, or are they going to run the ball? I mean, last drive they were throwing it long, throwing it deep. I think these coaches are aggressive, and I think they have something to prove. Most definitely. Yeah, this is this is a very big game. You know, I saw something on Instagram saying this is the game to watch in Southern California. So, did you really? Yeah, I did. Wow. Well, we're we're very honored to be uh, presenting this game to you guys.
Yeah. Losing or taking their time here. I, th I think they'll start it out with a little run play to bias. You know, he's been just busting them home to the end zones all night. I mean, but uh, yeah, 100%. He's been ramming it down their throat. But they're going to drop back. Low wide receiver back. screen. Number eight wide receiver screen. And, and they're just so athletic. They, may, they get by the Cubs. And they, like what, like what I, just what I was saying, Dash. I mean, you look at a play like that. Looks like a play is going to result in a two, three-yard gain, maybe even a loss of yardage. And losing are so athletic, so quick, they can turn it into a 12-yard gain. Yeah, you know, I talked to Bryce Coleman at the half. He said this team they didn't, they didn't know a lot about them. They weren't supposed to be amazing, but, I mean, as we've seen today, just – they have Look crazy really talent, really crazy impressive. athletic players. And they don't they're missing their star player, Bunch of Young. Yeah, they are missing Bunch of Young. Yeah, I mean, you see we see Bunchy right there on the sideline. Injured, but it is what it is. So losing her with a bit of an interesting formation there. Oh. Alexander's gonna find another wide receiver screen. And that's just been their bread and butter all night as he gets swarmed. Yeah. Oh, ball comes out. That could be going for the Cubs. It's getting a little chippy in there, but the balls come out. Henry Cassani there with the tackle. Yeah, good play by Cassani, just laying the hammer, laying the wood, whatever you want to call it. Oh um, yeah, knocking the ball loose. Losing or gets the ball back, but still, it's huge. Shout out to a guy who just checked in, number 51, John Francis, taking in some reps on the D-line. Francis, just an absolute hard worker, one of the hardest working players on that football team, I can I can imagine. Uh, he's always working off-season, on-season. He just doesn't matter to him. He's always in the gym. He's always getting better at his craft. So I'm loving to see him getting some reps. Yeah, just a gritty big player there. Hopefully Definitely he can number make seven. happen. He's going to get, and he's going to dive forward, but I think he's still going to be short. Henry Cassani getting aggressive over there. Th that is not someone you want to mess with, Frank. No, Henry Cassani, certainly a strong guy. Uh, do not want to mess with him. Yeah, that's a guy who you want to be on his good side. Yeah. You know, you, you know, you might look at that last name and the last name of the coach, and you might say, "Hey, like, is there any nepotism in here?" But Henry has just dispelled any rumors of that because he is just an outstanding player, truly one of the standouts on this team. As a fourth down play call going for, it's not going to pay off, I don't think, and it's going to be Cub football. I believe that was third and three. No. Really? So Cubs get the turnover on downs. Two straight possessions have ended in turnovers there for the Cubs. Yeah, like I said, if they could have capitalized on those, on those turnovers, it, it could be a 14-29 game right now with plenty of time, but just the offense can't get anything going here. And we're going to see Thomas Nile come back on the field. You know, Kasani's trusting his guy, taking his chance. 100%. Oh. Oh, he had Gallagher over the middle. Oh, man, he's wrapped up really quickly. The pass was complete to number 24, uh, Justin Smith, the running back. But not able to get anywhere. Now dropping back. Now dropping back, looking to pass. He's going to roll right with some flag pressure. Flag on the play. Flag coming in, so maybe a free play here for the Cubs. Another Throw flag. Deep. Two oh. flags coming in, both in the backfield and in the uh, in the in, in, in deep. We'll see what the call is here, Frank. Yeah. Could be a situation of offsetting penalties. Yeah, like I've mentioned many times today, I, I mean, if Thomas can't get anything going here, I, I do like them trusting the young quarterback, JT. Hopefully he can make something happen. Yeah. I mean, that would just be a really just a, a white flag, so I'm not sure if they're... It is a white flag, yeah, but, I mean, depending on how this game goes, we could definitely see him come in, if, especially yeah. if they continue to be down. So 
Whoa. So another self-inflicted wound. It's going to make uh, make it a second and 16. Just a another brutal. Uh, at, at least it's not a loss of downs, though. I mean, that's the bright side. They get another redo. Throw it deep. You got Gallagher over the middle. He's going to throw it up, and it's picked, it's picked off. off. Oh, man. Is that pick number four on the night? That might be number five, Frank. Wow. Ugly night. I think that's number five as well. I think you're right. Shocking. Just an utter... Just uh, an utter failure of the Cubs to do anything tonight. Really tough to watch because you know this team can play better. You know that these guys are talented. You know that this team and this, this offense and this defense, they can get it going. They can put some stops together, which is why it's so painful to watch them fall short. So fall so far short of that tonight. It's going to be a real gut check for the Cubs how, how they can recover from this. As Alexander's going to keep it, he's going to run it up the middle. He's going to get another gain of uh, nine yards. It's going to be second and one. It's very tough. You know, these Cubs, they get they get a stop on defense, and immediately it's right back to, you know, they, they, they have to turn around and be right back on um, on offense. Yeah. I mean, I'm on defense. Defense again, yeah. Scott Taylor maybe looking for looking for a little blitz there on the on the outside, you know, just a nightmare matchup on the line. Yeah, Scott Taylor's a, ma a nightmare matchup for anyone as Taylor gets some penetration there, but it's not going to be caught. It's going to be a oh another man, screen. Six. Jake Ariano is going to be able to. Bring Look, they're going to keep there. calling screens because it takes three Cubs to tackle a single one of them. Yeah. So why would they not call a screen? No, yeah, I mean. Just, just ground and pound. You know, they're just really taking it to the Cubs all game. I mean, they're really just ramming it right down. The you know, if the, if the Cubs aren't going to do anything about it, just just I would keep it going. You know, I'm I'm a very big Cubs fan. I go to this school, but I mean, this is just a lot of weaknesses in the defense here. Look, you know this team can play better. They have really talented seniors. They have some great young guys like Lockhart and Valdez. But you know, it's just it's just really uh, it's frustrating. Yeah, you know, it's 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 frustrating to watch. Um, I'm sure it's frustrating for Kasani. He knows his team can do better. I'm sure it's frustrating for the entire staff. As Alexander fakes a pitch, gonna get another screen to number one as he gets and some it's yards it's, there. And it's gonna take three to bring him down again too. Yeah. Look, just these guys are just out playing the Cubs. Pass complete from Jair Alexander to Dejon Calamon, followed by Dejon Calamon with the big gain there. Bajorquez with the tackle. Yeah, I mean, it, it's funny. The co quarterback's name is Jair Alexander. I mean, Jair Alexander, a great cornerback in the NFL. Yeah. Could be uh, some foreshadowing of, of this what, young of man's future. Yeah. 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 I mean, he certainly played like a star player tonight, for sure. So Alexander lining up in the shotgun. He's got his man, Bias, right next to him. He's going to find Bias out of the nice catch there. Way to haul that in by oh Bias. He makes God, a man miss. Bias. Runs right by Kasani, and he's going to get the first down. And Losing her, continuing to roll as we enter the final minute of this first uh, first quarter of the second half. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is unfortunate for the Cubs how it had to turn out this way. Definitely. Hopefully they can take this as a learning experience and build something from this, you know. Take it with a little grain of salt, maybe. Alexander lining up in the shotgun. You know, he really hasn't lined up under center all that much tonight. No, I mean, why would you, though? I mean, he's got no. all the looseness in the gonna world. He's going to take it himself. It's going to be a QB draw, and he's going to take it and get maybe five or six yards. You know, 
The offensive coordinator by Lusinger is doing a great job tonight. You know, his play calling is just really fitting. He, he knows he knows the boys he has are special, you know, Ma making some good calls there. Tackle there by Zomerano. As we hit triple zeros in the third quarter. It's all Lusinger. Just... Brutal, just really brutal. We'll be back when we bring you the fourth quarter. John Malloy Broadcast Club, home of all Cub sports. Find us at cubcast.org. You know, public uh, <laughs> public address announcer, trying to get these Loyola fans hyped up, advocating for getting getting all uh, yeah, excited yeah. for this fourth quarter. Pretty hard to get excited right now if you're a Loyola fan. Yeah, I mean, being down 29-0, just not the spot you want to be in. Really, just uh, a, a huge drive for the Cubs. Need to get a stop here. Just Outside for, pitch just for dignity. As number eight's gonna just run, get the corner, and he gets another. And he, no one can bring him down as he gets all the way to the 16 yard line. Maxwell Young gonna get the card there. It's gonna be Henry Gassani with a tackle. Well, watching from up here, you really notice a lot of chirping goes goes on oh, yeah. out the, on the field. You mean? Gassani's a big chirper. Yeah, and Scott Taylor as well, you know, you see him number Taylor's 15. Taylor's always played with a lot of swagger, a lot of spunk ever since his freshman year. He's a guy that, you know, he's gonna get in a one-on-one -on -one matchup with you on the line. He's gonna overpower you and then he's gonna let you know about it. Yeah, I mean, you wonder, you wonder what they're saying. Yeah. Not sure we could broadcast that. No, definitely over the not. the John Malloy Broadcast Club Airwaves, to be honest with you, Dash. Try to keep it PG-13 so on there. Jet sweep there, and it's wrapped up in the back. Big hit Henry by Henry Cassani there. You love to see that as a Cub fan. Nice play there by Henry as he gets up in the backfield. Isaiah Sanders and Jake Ariano there to congratulate him for the nice play. Look, look at Henry again, just go, going after the other team again. Just flying around in there. Henry Cassani, you know, just doing doing a great job. He, he's been playing all night, every down. You know, it takes a lot to do that. Definitely. Cassani just, he's a mainstay on this defense, and he's just going to, he's poised to have an explosive rest of this season and an even better junior year. As Alexander's going to take the snap and give it to, uh, Ta like they're taking bias out. Yeah, the, you, you wouldn't want to injure your star player with 10 minutes left in the fourth. You're up by 29, just... Bad recipe. Bias had a very successful night tonight as well, you know, just let him rest. Yeah. Third and sixteen, the Cubs showing a little bit a little bit of life here. You know, I think Lusinger will go for it though if it comes to fourth down. I mean they're just the type of team. They're ch they're a very chippy team. Henry, Henry Cassani, Cassani another great there. play there. He's saying, you know what? I don't care if this I don't care if this game is I don't care if it's a 50 point game. I'm going to I'm going to keep playing pedal to the metal. I'm going to keep giving my all. Yeah, you know, Henry Cassani, like we mentioned earlier in our player spotlight on the number 5, two sport athlete and he's just a warrior in both sports. Very gritty player. 100%. Look, to start as a sophomore on this Loyola High Lacrosse team. Yeah, that's impressive. Super impressive. And freshman year, he has a very prominent role on the team, you know? Yeah. On the JV team. Yeah. And and, on, and, on, and he was a varsity. Going to be a four-year varsity lacrosse player as well. Yeah, he will be. So, you know, can uh, extol this Kasani uh, kid as much as you can. And look, he has another Kasani coming up in the ranks in the freshman class. Yeah. Alexander steps up in the pocket. He's going to look for his man downfield. No one overthrown. No one. And that's fourth and 19. And it'll be Cubs ball. 
TK coming back out, trying to make something happen here for the Loyola Cubs. 8.58 here remaining in the game, Dash. If you had to guess, are these Cubs going to get some points on the board before this game's over? Um, I think right about now it's a coin flip, honestly. Yeah, for sure. You know, I, I hate to say it, but just the way things are going tonight. No, yeah. Look, we at the John Malloy Broadcast Club, we are going to give you objective commentary. We're not just going to be – we're going to call it how we see it. Yeah. As that's going to be Niall in the backfield. He's going to take the snap. He's going to look for Jura his man, Duke. And he's going to hold on to it. Good catch by Duke Good catcher. There. It's going to be a gain of four yards, three or four yards. Yeah, you know, that, that's a that's a receiver's worst nightmare right there when you catch it and you just see the DB coming to tee you up. You know, Duke had a pretty quiet Damian game. Yeah. But he really made his presence known last week against Culver City, wouldn't you say? I feel like that was his uh, coming out party, as you will, as that's going to be uh, Justin Smith, I believe, getting a nice little carry there. Yeah, you know, I mean, I know, like like Frank said, Duke was a little quiet against Damian, but we knew, we knew what this boy was capable of. Coming from Oaks, you know, offers from U of A, just – very, Niles very gonna talented player. Khalil is going to find Khalil out midfield. He's pushed back to the 48-yard line, but the Cubs' offense got some momentum here. Yeah, the Cubs showing some signs of love here. Frank, are you the type of coach, if you score here, are you onside kicking it? 100%. Yeah, I totally agree. Nelson, not even a question. Yeah, not even a question. Nelson Pye, hopefully he can make a good snap here. He had some trouble in the first quarter. Good snap. Dumping it to Justin Smith, the senior running back. Gets a little gain of three or yards there. Yeah. You know, that's that's the chippy o offense we're used to seeing from the Cubs, you know? Some some runs, some short passes, just picking up three, four yards, just yeah. really taking Doing it to another team. Yeah. And I, I think that's why they've been so sex f successful in the last couple of years, you know? League champions last year, beating St. Francis. What a game that was. What a game. Letting it air out to Ju Duke. But that's just a uh, – maybe pass interference, though. Looks like a flag is going to come in. I think th that is on Lusinger, too, so that will, that should move the chains. Yep, pass interference. So the Cubs are creeping in on the red zone here, and hopefully, hopefully they can get it done. First down Loyola, baby. Let's go. Those Cubs drive. Got yeah, some momentum here. Look, it looks like they made the switch to uh, Niles going to drop back. He's going to find his man, Khalil, as he gets hit real hard there. Good good play there by Niles, though, just to get the ball loose with those big linemen just coming to swallow him in the backfield. So good play there. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, maybe we'll see Thomas make an appearance. I've been saying that all night, but I think now's a good time to just oh, get Oh, pressure's going to get to TK. He's going to screen to Smith. one up to uh, Justin Thomas. Oh, and Justin he has Smith. the outside, Smith. and he's going to take it all the way. Touchdown, Loyola. So Justin Smith gets the Cubs on the board here in the fourth quarter. Niall looked like a bit of a broken play. The pressure got to him. But Niall. They are going for two. Able to make something out of it. And get the first score of the night here for the Cubs. Big play. Big play. Oh, they're, they are not going for two. I, I saw Kasani making some si sing signals on the sideline, but they're, they're just going to take their one. No need to rush anything now. 9 p.m. here, you know. 6.42 left in the, left in the quarter. And it's good. Seven on the board for the Cubs. Justin Smith getting it down there. So Cubs kickoff unit coming out of the field. 
for the first time since the beginning of this game. Yeah, yeah, I think I think they're definitely they have to go with an onside kick here. I think it might be JG who's taking it too. You know, the soccer player. Yeah, he, he, he did do the opening kickoff. Yeah, he, he's got some experience. He can really boot it. So perhaps some signs of life here by the Cubs, but you know I'm afraid to say it may have come all a little too all all too late. Yeah, you know I think we had those drives in the third. I think if we could have capitalized on those, we could have maybe had a ball game. But I think it's like you said, it's just too little, too late. Let's see if these Cubs are going to go for the onside kick. You got to imagine that they're going to. They have to. But I no, don't they think definitely that they will. Are. Oh, they are. Yeah, they will. No. Nope. Losing or falls in it. That's tough break, you know. Pretty tough break. Pretty solid onside there, though, by JG. Nice little kick there by Gallagher. Yeah, you you if if you're if you're the Cubs here, you're just trying to fly into that into that quarterback, just absolutely demolish Alexander and hopefully get a yeah. fumble or something. Yeah, that's all you can hope for. You got to expect losing to just keep it on the ground here, run out this clock. Yeah, this is just a gritty loser to team. Yeah. Gritty laps. Oh, another flag. Legal procedure on losing her, honestly, at some point. Yeah, you know, we we are going to be losing Khalil Cueva at the end of this year, so that could stir some things up for the Cubs offense. But, I mean, we've got Sam Middlesworth, the sophomore, and we got Sutton Cole, the JV star right now. So I think I think we're in good hands for these next couple of years. Yeah, you look a lot of young talent here at this loyal team, a lot of homegrown talent. Alexander's going to find his man there, number zero. He's going to make one man miss, make another man miss, get up past midfield, brought down at the 48-yard line. Jake Ariano with the tackle there at the 48. Looks like losing is going to start uh, running this clock down a little bit, taking their time calling this play. Yeah, Lusinger, the Lusinger sideline is just crazy Electric. energetic. Electric. Electric's a great way to describe it, Frank. Man, you got it. What another thing I've never really noticed is this: this Lusinger team's pretty small. No, not, yeah, not a lot of guys on that team. I mean, the O line's pretty big, though. No, I'm talking about, no, I'm talking about the uh, no the. Uh, oh yeah, in depth, in, yeah. yeah. I mean, Alexander. Oh my goodness, Alexander. He is cooking. That's a. Bad look for the for the program there. You don't want to see a quarterback getting yards out of that. No. Yeah, but no, definitely agree with you. I mean, look at the Cubs bench. I mean, there's about 150 kids on the squad, maybe. So. No way. No way. Maybe 70. Really? Yeah. I I got 100 here, so. No chance. Jacob Farag, number 42, with the tackle there. Yeah, I mean, you love seeing that for the seniors. Just make 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 a couple memories here playing Cubs football. You know, they've had four years, and it, it comes Definitely. to an end. So they're just soaking up all the Friday night lights they can get here in downtown LA. Losing your calls to timeout. Not quite sure what they're going over right now, but. I, I honestly think they're trying to take a deep shot here. Like, I think they want to they wanna make an impact. Yeah, they, they, I don't. We're not sure what what's going on here with this timeout, but it seems like Lusner really wants to make their mark and show the Cubs who is boss. Yeah, they're saying we're gonna come onto your home field and we're gonna beat the heck out of you. <laughs> yeah. You know, this Lusner team though, we may we may see them down the line, maybe in the playoffs, playoffs. or something. So, hopefully the Cubs can just come out of this with positives and uh. And um, find out their weaknesses. 
the Mighty Roar Band over there playing, playing their hearts out. Yeah, they're, they're getting electric, trying to get the boys hyped up. Shout out to the Mighty Roar. Student section, not as full as it should be. Yeah, you know, that's that's one thing that's disappointing about Cub football is we don't we don't get a very big student turnout to the games. I mean, the Culver City game was electric. and That was because it was the uh, Big Brother game. Yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah, you, you got to show the school spirit, you know? Got it. Alexander's going to drop back to pass. He's, gonna He's just going to drop games. it. Is that going to be intentional grounding, or was he? Guess not. Looks like intentional grounding. It should have been, yeah. I don't think he was. Yeah, you know, I'm a big, big, big C4L type of guy. I'm coming out to all these games, whether I'm not commentating. So yeah. I think we gotta work work on our spirit. Definitely. Alexander's gonna get the ball. He's gonna find his man. And he falls down. he's finally gonna get brought down. And it's gonna be Cub football at the 48 Nine. yard line. Is TK coming out? I see, I see JT getting into the huddle. Really. I see. Oh, but he's got the clipboard. I, I don't. I don't think he'll be coming out. Hey, you know, school spirit. School spirit is certainly a big element of Loyola. You know, uh, water polo just had a huge win tonight. Yeah, definitely. Shout out to a lot of the water polo players: uh, Connor Thompson, Kyle Jackson, Patrick Ashby, Tobin Hunt. Shout out to those guys getting it done. Yeah. Uh, look, and I know that they're wishing these football guys are getting it done too. A lot yeah. of just, you know, Cub unity when it comes to each sport. Thomas now is going to step up in the pocket. Look for gonna someone Going to sling it deep. What a ball. Flags in, but good little pass, but it's picked. Picked. But there are flags on the play. Flags on the play. Niles gets slow to get up. Yeah, you, you did mention Tobin Hunt. He was a great freshman football player, freshman years. But interesting he didn't decide to play this year. And it's going to be a flag on Loyola, so it's going to be losing her ball. Brutal. Absolutely it's going to be interception brutal. number six on the night for Niles. It's like, now do you put in Thomas? I mean, the game, I hate to say it, but I think it's over. I, I, I think you do put, I think you put in Jack Thomas. No no reason to injure Nile with this long season ahead of you. Just no. game three. It happens, though, you Just know. Just rough night for the Loyola offense. You know, six picks, plus I think a turnover on downs. Just really just nothing going their way. Yeah. Me, me and Frank will be, will be back. We'll we'll be back to watch maybe baseball, lacrosse, basketball. Yeah, basketball. Um, Man, baseball made some big offseason pickups too, taking two Pally varsity players, Jimmy Levy and Brendan Bendel. So we will be back. A lot of flags coming in. You got to start thinking at some point. Just let this clock run out. You know, six interceptions by the Cubs, down by 22 points, four I minutes left. Yeah, I mean, or Let's just stop calling these penalties. You or, know? or put in some of the younger guys. Use this as a teaching moment, I think, for Kasani. But yeah, on the refs, they sh they just let it run. I mean, very chippy game though. You don't want anyone getting injured in the last couple minutes over just no, a dumb not. penalty. Losinger may bust one home here. Oh my goodness! And here we go. Oh my goodness! But he's gonna get caught. He's gonna get caught. Is that Ariano with I the? I believe that's Valdez, number two. D Desi Valdez with yes, the DK Metcalf esque. Chase yeah, down. definitely. Clock running as we have 420 se four minutes 20 seconds left. Yes, you know about school spirit though, Frank. The volleyball games get a very big turnout. Oh yeah. Yeah, especially for the rivalry games like Costa Loyola. They played at LMU last year, and the team they lost some players, but they'll be solid. We got. Some sophomores coming in. We got Nate Garrett, um, Thomas Joyce, Matthew Messenger. Just they'll be good. Fumble. Fumble balls out. Come and Loyal is gonna receive, recover it. So now this would be interesting. Do they bring in JT for the final three minutes and try and get him to just get acclimated with the system? I mean, but I th I think it's Niall again. I mean, at some point you gotta make a change, right? Yeah, I mean. Six you interceptions. You know the saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But this is pretty broke. This is pretty broke. So I think I think they should fix it tonight. 
you know, it's just an off night for Niall, but like I think give Jack a chance. Let him let him shine and see what the kid's made of. You know, they gave Niall a chance last year when they're demolishing Crespi and he played very well and Yeah, one hundred percent. In the first two games he's played solid. Yeah, Niall's just a student of the game. He's a guy who's always working. He takes his job very seriously. Yeah, you know, he tr he's training with throw to win on the regular, so. Yeah. is trying to hurry up the offense. You know, that's that's a sign of a great leader right there. Totally. Upperclassman right there. Very, very good player. Just take a shot here. Throw it deep. Khalil running. Throw it to him. Throw it to him. You got time. Hit JJ. Find Duke. Duke, and oh, he goes Duke for the hurdle. Flying. You know, that's the type of guy we like to see for the Cubs. Just a grinder, an absolute beast. Jiraputo just working all game. Throw it deep. Gallagher. Gallagher making a man miss. Gallagher getting some nice movement. Just there. a very chippy player right there, Gallagher. Gallagher, you know, great athlete. Just exceptional. You know, also not a very big football player. Only first year last year, and he really had an impact with the Cubs. I mean, last year he took the opening kickoff to the apartments. So very Niles good gonna athlete. Step up. He's, he's going to hit Khalil. Make Khalil wide open. Is he going to make something happen? Khalil's and he's gonna going score. to take it in. And it's going to be 14-29. You know? It ain't over till it's over, folks. Cubs making it interesting here in the late going to the fourth. I feel like you got to go for two here, but they're going to bring out the field goal unit. What would be the benefit of going for two, though, realistically? Uh, I, I, I don't know, but I, I'm, I'm a fan of it, you know? Yeah. I think they do need one, though, if they're going to tie the game, so... Yeah, they do. And I think they'll bring out JG for a little onside kick. Like, like I said a couple times today, um, you wonder what could have been if they could have capitalized on that big third quarter momentum they had going. Definitely. Yeah, they had two very good drives, got close to the red zone, just didn't capitalize, and now it's a 14-29 game, so what could have been? Are they, are they, they, they got an onside kick it here now, right? I mean, they don't, they don't have JG in, so I'm just a little confused, but we'll, we'll see what Schultz can do. Yeah. I'm sure Schultz is proficient enough. Yeah, you know, senior punter, I'm sure I'm sure he knows what he's doing. He, he's a veteran, so. Ma make something happen here, Schultz. Let's go. Onside kick. Didn't go 10 yards. No. You know, I'm a fan of the... The hard onside kick where you just pin it right yeah. in their mouth and hope for a little ricochet. But he Schultz went for a little soft one there. Yeah. Just nothing happened. The Olympians, I do not think they're going to be smart with this. I think they're just going to keep putting the pedal to the metal. But he is under center, so. And it's going to be a handoff. Hand Lay the boom. Lay the boom. Ooh. You know, Desi got a, got a little hand on the ball, you know. Was hoping for some action there, but just couldn't get anything to go as well. No. It is what it is, though. Loser are now going to run this clock down as much as they can. You know, I got to say, uh, this Cubs team has really ended this game on a positive note. You know, really tough, but, you know, they scored two touchdowns here in these last five minutes. Yeah. And I think that's a really inspiring thing to carry on. You know, even if they don't win this game, which it's not looking like they're going to do, to carry that on into their next 
matchup is huge. Alexander lined up under center again, so I think this will just be another handoff. You know, giving some runs to number zero. Let's hope for a little strip or something here. I mean, they gotta make the boys gotta make something happen. Cassani and Ariano there in the tackle. That's a dangerous duo, Dash. No, definitely. I mean, Henry Cassani, just an absolutely, absolute monster. Sorry. But, yeah, that is a dangerous du duo. And Ariano, you know, solid player. He's, he's got some got some attention there by the big college coaches. Definitely. I believe he went on a Cal visit, and they're just going to kneel it off. Yeah. And, folks, uh, I hate to break it to you, but that's the game. That's folks. going to be the final from Smith here. It's going to be 29 14 losing our Olympians. Loyola calls a timeout. You know, Cassani's big believer. I had him for PE last year. Big believer, just always giving your efforts. I think he's going to try and make something happen, but realistically, that is the final score. We have been uh, really pleased to bring you this game. We hope you've enjoyed this broadcast, courtesy of the John Malloy Broadcast Club. Yep. I can personally say I think I speak for both Dash and I when I say it's been an absolute privilege to be uh, talking to you guys. Yeah, definitely. Absolute, just an absolute pleasure talking to you guys, hanging out with you guys tonight. Very, very fun experience. And we're and looking forward to being back. Yeah, we'll be back, definitely. Tune in, Cub fans. I think they'll just kneel it here. Yeah. Let's see if Kasani takes it. Oh, they're going to hand it off. He's going to fight forward and he's going to. He's going to bust it deep. Come on. Look at B Lock, though. Oh, my God. Brandon Lockhart getting in a little altercation there. Rest coming in to separate it. Oh, big scrum on the Loyola sideline. Huge scrum on the Loyola sideline. Champ Westbrook's coming in there. Not going to let that happen. The fans, the fans are electric about this. The losing your fans are filming this. They're, they're getting hyped up. They know their boys can handle with Loyola. They know their boys just absolutely demoralize them. Look, honestly, this is just frustration penalties. This Cubs team has been defeated. They've been beaten fair and square, and now they're. Kasani's out on the field too, getting a little aggressive with the refs. And he's pulling, no, he's pulling Lockhart out. He is, yeah. He's calling Lockhart over. He's saying, you're out. you're done. Your night's over, buddy. And I can't blame him. That seemed pretty malignant. No, yeah, there was no need for that. I mean, Brendan's a great kid. He's, I mean, it, hey, if I, if I was the number one player in all of California, you definitely have a target on your back, and there's definitely some pressure. So for these losing your boys to come out here and just demoralize this defense on Loyalist turf, you know, you, you feel for the kid. Look, I'm almost feeling like I wish this game could just get put out of its misery. Yeah. You know, this has just been a slog to uh, to watch, and it's just it's tough. Yeah, it's a it's a little upsetting to watch, especially in the second half here. This Don't know why they didn't take an E. Yeah, I, I have no idea. I mean, also like you you blame B Lock, but why why are they running the ball and trying to bust one home? Yeah, with a I mean, minute left in the game. I mean. They've busted so many uh, plays this whole time. I know. It's absolutely ridiculous. But also, wh why is Kasani taking a timeout there, too? I mean, just he, the game's over. So Cubs are going to get the kickoff here. This game is in its death throes. Um, look, not much to say here, but... Cubs, we're not the best team out here today. G give JT a chance to shine with a minute. Let him let him take a couple shots, you know? I'd love to see that. Yeah. I don't think it'll happen, but. Look, this losing your team just came to play, and the Cubs didn't. That's the bottom line. No, yeah. 
Shout out sophomore Evan Santos getting in there in kick return. Yeah. Yeah, Santos, good player last year for the Cubs freshman team. Unfortunate injury, game one versus Damian, collarbone, but we know what he's capable of. Did he ever come back from that injury? Uh, yes, he did for the last couple of games. Yeah, Evan Santos back there. We'll see what he can make happen. Maybe His first, uh, first snap of the game. Maybe he can take one loose, take one home. I mean... Smithfield starting to empty out here. This game is just really just. And they're just. Cubs will get at the 40. That, that's going to be a kickoff penalty. And TK's going to come out again. It's a 21 point game. Let's see what the Cubs do here. I mean. I think you gotta just run the ball out, honestly. Yeah, I, I think that's what they will do. The uh, losing her sideline, still fired up. The cheerleaders are loving it. They're getting hyped. The they are very it. hyped, yeah. And they got a lot to be happy about, to be honest with you, Dash. Yeah, big win. As uh, it looks like the Cubs are just gonna, Smith oh! Smith may take one deep again. Oh my God, he might. Smith showing some late game fireworks. Yeah, Smith, the uncommitted senior running back. Who knows? Playing real well. Yeah. Justin Smith, great guy. You know, uh, see him around campus, just always smiling, always a happy presence. His whispers are going to come in. I mean, just come on. I mean, I, I don't know what's happening. This is just... Who is, why are you calling, calling a timeout? Calling a timeout, exactly. Just kneel You're the ball. You're winning by 21 points, and there's 50 seconds left, losing her. <laughs> what are you doing? Just kneel the ball. You got, a, you got a 90 minute drive back. You got to. <laughs> you got to get that, going. Maybe, maybe they're trying to beat rush hour. They're trying to just outlast rush hour traffic or something, but I mean, geez. Yeah, fr Friday night in downtown LA, I it mean. Get, it can get gnarly, but I mean. It can I get mean, very gnarly. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure they don't want to wait around here and just try and beat out the traffic. They want to they want to let, let their boys play a little more. My goodness. Going to throw wow, a little dump off to Justin Smith. Smith is down. working. He is an absolute legend out there. You know, Friday night legend, just making some plays. He is working. 40 seconds left. Now we can confidently say, barring something unusual, this will be the final score of the game, 35-14. You, you never know what happens. Niles going to give the ball to no, Smith again. No, just give it all to Smith. Smith carrying defenders with him. And you got to wonder if that's going to be the last play of the game. I think that'll be the ball game. No, it looks like they're going to try to run another play. Clock's looking to run a little faster, you know. This is the last play of the game. Seven seconds left. Should they take a shot here? Which are they going to? They're going to find Khalil. No. Uh, Nothing yeah. doing. I thought a little. Thought about a and little. And that's the player. game. That's the game. This has been a pleasure bringing you this game, guys. This is Dash Bruin and Frank, Frank Lichman signing, signing off.